But first, Kevin Sullivan has seen more of the world than most of us could imagine. As a foreign correspondent for the Washington Post, he's reported from more than 75 countries and every continent but Antarctica. It's been a long and fascinating journey for someone who grew up in Brunswick, attended the University of Maine, and graduated from the University of New Hampshire. Kevin Sullivan was back in Brunswick recently for a talk at Bowdoin College, and we talked about what he's seen and learned while traveling the world and what it's like to return to Maine. What is it like? What runs through your head when you come back to your hometown of Brunswick? I love being here. I come back and I look around and there's, I see a story in every house around here. I see a story in this, every, every, everywhere I look, I see some moment of my childhood. And when you go by the houses, do you say, oh, I remember that was the Johnson's house. I was in seventh grade biology with uh, exactly, their exactly. youngest daughter. There are, the, there are the Watsons and there are the Flemings. And I know, you know, I, I drive around and I think, whatever happened to that person? Because there are a lot of them I don't know. But my best, a lot of my best friends from are still people I grew up with here, and I, you know, I try to come up and see them as often as I can. When you graduated from Brunswick High School, were you eager to get out of here? Did you want to go see the world? You know, that for me came a little bit later. One day I woke up when I was about 25 years old, and I realized I've never been anywhere. Um, I went to Canada once on, on the Prince of Fundy ferry when I was a kid, but I'd, beyond that, I'd never seen any of the world, so I decided I really wanted to do that. So I sold my car, quit my job, you know, chucked my stuff in my parents' basement and got, bought a backpack and went off to Europe for a year. And I just caught the bug and never, never looked back. You worked as a foreign correspondent for about 16 years. Is that right? Yeah, got the roughly, timing yeah. roughly correct. Yeah. What was that job like? I mean, for a kid who had not seen the world to finally go to the places you got to go to report from dozens of different countries. What was the experience like? Just fantastic. By the time I got to the Washington Post, I had figured out a way to, you know, I always thought it would be great to travel and get somebody else to pay for it. So I, I did that when I worked at the Providence Journal for a while. And I, from there, I went to the Middle East. You know, on their nickel, I went to the Middle East. I went to South America. I went to Colombia. I was in Pablo Escobar's house shortly after the Colombian army had raided it. You know, he was still at large and I was in his house and thinking this is the most exciting thing in the world. Um, I had gone to Africa a couple of times, so by the time I got to the post, I knew that I really was very excited about working overseas. If you've worked in, say, Mexico City, how far, how difficult is it to then work in Tokyo or vice versa, to move to places where everything is new, everything is different? How tough is it? I think it's like it's just, it's, it's as different as people are different. You know, for some people, this would be an absolute nightmare, something they wouldn't want to do in a million years. They couldn't, they wouldn't be able to figure it out or care. For me, it's just exciting. I love going to new places. I remember I, I went to Kinshasa once in the Congo, and I landed and I got off the plane and I thought, oh my God, where am I? There were no signs, there was nothing in English, and I just sort of felt my way through and got outside and found a taxi to go to the hotel. And I had written down the name of the hotel I was going to. And I thought that was the most exciting, exotic, fun, interesting thing ever. But I get it that for a lot of people, that would be just a nightmare. The whole point of being a foreign correspondent is to tell readers back in the United States about other places. What's your sense of how well Americans understand the rest of the world? When we were in Japan, they surveyed a bunch of Americans and they said, who's the most famous Japanese person that you know? And the winner was Godzilla. And the Japanese heard about this and they were just absolutely heartbroken. heartbroken. And they have, a, they have a word for it. They call it the information gap. And the, the, every Japanese person knows so much about what's going on in the United States. And they understand that it's just they, they understand it as a sad fact that a lot of Americans, that most Americans, have no idea what's going on in Japan. Our movies are everywhere, our food is everywhere, our music is everywhere. People know us in a way that we can't possibly know every other country. On this visit to Bowdoin, you're going to be talking to students who are interested in going into journalism, perhaps, students who are interested in going into public service, government, diplomacy, politics, whatever. Journalism and government are not real popular right now as career paths. And there are a lot of people who would say to young people, oh, what are you doing thinking about going down those roads? What do you say to young people in, who are interested in those two pursuits? I say if those two pursuits are under attack, then you fight back. Because I think that journalism plays an incredibly important role in our, in our society. I think journalism is one of the purest forms of patriotism. And I would encourage any young people who want to get involved in journalism, in public service, to do it because you're going to make the world a better place. 
I asked Kevin Sullivan about what are his must-see places when he comes home to Brunswick, which he does with some regularity, and I wrote about them in our web story. Let's just say one of them involves pizza. So even for a guy <laughs> who's been all over the world and eaten every kind of food imaginable, the lure of a certain pizza back home is strong. <laughs> what a great interview. What an interesting guy. Really fun guy. And again, you'll find that story, the additional web story, on the in the 207 section of newscentermain.com on our website or on our mobile app.